What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff Rose, GoodFinancialSense.com, and bringing back another interview today. Today is a topic which I don't even know why I'm doing this interview because I hate this topic. The topic is the B word. Many of us know this as budgeting. Uh, if you read any of my blog material, you know that I, I hate budgeting. I would do so many other things, watch paint dry, uh, try to build something that I don't know what I'm doing, you know, power tools, which I'm not a handy guy by any means, but uh, no, I, I, I seriously do hate budgeting. I've outsourced that to my wife. She's like the budgeting person in our household. Uh, people laugh at that since I'm a financial planner. But nonetheless, I know budgeting is important. I know that is essential for any household that's trying to get in charge of their finances that they have to have some type of budget. So there are plenty of tools out there that many people can use, but one that I'm intrigued and interested to share with you today is called You Need a Budget. Other people know it as YNAB, as, as I've just been instructed. And today I'm bringing you Jesse Meacham, who is the creator, founder, uh, president, CEO, marketing guy, <laughs> probably everything. Uh, but he has created this awesome program, this software program, and I want to bring him on today to share with you more how it works. And for those that are in the exact same situation as me that hate budgeting but know they need to do it and use it, uh, here's a platform that you can try out that I think Jesse will tell you that you will love it after you get going. Is that right, Jesse? That is right. I'd, I'd be uh, lying if I if I didn't try and convince everybody to do it. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So we were talking a little bit beforehand about you know what where this program came to be. Talk a little bit about the beginning of uh, YNAB. You know why you felt the compelling need to create this product and, and kind of how it's evolved over the last several years. Yeah, it uh, started in 2004, and uh, actually it started in. Early 2003, I was uh, going to be married. I was had about three years of school left, and I was working on a master's degree in accounting. And um, I was kind of projecting what my wife's hourly rate was, what my hourly rate was. I think they were like eight and ten dollars. So we were just rolling in it, you know. And uh, <laughs> living large. <laughs> so I'm looking. I'm thinking, you know, I think we need a budget to be able to manage this once we're married. And uh, it was pretty dismal and. And so uh, my wife was going to graduate in, in a semester in social work, which everybody knows is just an extremely lucrative field. So our prospects, even after her graduation, weren't great, and then mine was three years off. So I was, I was thinking, okay, we're going to have to pinch pennies. And uh, that was my original thought with budgeting was this is about penny pinching, you know, hanging on for dear life to that last coin. But um, what ended up happening, we, I created a spreadsheet because I was an accounting nerd and um, showed it to my wife. We were in the honeymoon phase so she of course accepted it was like oh yeah okay that sounds great because we still were you know really into this whole marriage thing and uh, that was good timing on my part so we started doing the budget and it was really working well I kind of developed a method that we now you know sell as four rules but they were rules that I just kind of stumbled on and thought well this makes sense and this makes sense and then when when we were going to have our first boy Porter that was where I was trying to figure out, okay, I don't want to go into debt for school. How can I make some extra money? And I decided I would try and sell the spreadsheet that I'd built. Um, the spreadsheet's now long gone, and we've, you know, we've morphed it into a standalone software package. And um, I just teach people my method, these four rules. I try and uh, dispel myths surrounding budgeting. And uh, yeah, we try and put out good software. So it's um, we've got a pretty good team in place now, and uh, yeah, we're just trying to spread the word as much as we can. Awesome. So you said uh, you have four rules when it comes to budgeting? Absolutely. Yeah. The first one uh, is to give every dollar a job. So it sounds like your wife does that, but we, uh, we basically just say, hey, when money comes in, you know, tell it what to do. And I know you have a military background because you know of your book that, uh, and soldier of finance, right? So. Yep. I was thinking, okay, Jeff's got this military background, and I've seen some of your videos that, that are awesome. So uh, it's the same, you know, when the drill sergeant stands up there and tells you what to do, you, you're standing at attention, and uh, then you do whatever he says, no matter what it is. You just, you just do it. And with with uh, money, it's the same thing, but you're the drill sergeant, and you just bark out orders, and your money will do what you say as long as you're there giving direction. And I'm sure we could run with analogies for the rest of the interview about the military and giving direction and how it would not function if you didn't. But that's the, that's the gist of the first rule. 
making sure every dollar has a purpose. And uh, yeah, people find that a lot of their money's been doing stuff they didn't really care about. And that's where a lot of the savings initially comes from. I like it. So um, second rule is just to take bigger, large expenses that kind of throw you off, like uh, Christmas, for instance. Everyone knows it's coming, you know? Yeah. It's like comes pretty much the same day every year, as far as I can tell. And we're still surprised by it, right? You know, we still, oh my gosh, Christmas came. We got to get the kids some stuff. I got to get my wife something. And we run up a credit card bill or whatever. So we try and teach people, hey, if you're going to spend, uh, for the sake of easy math, $1,200 on Christmas, set aside 100 bucks a month, make that large bill a monthly bill. And then when the bill comes, you just, you know, you have fun with it and enjoy, enjoy the holidays. And same thing happens with property taxes or car insurance that you pay every once in a while. It's just, we don't want people to get blindsided by those big expenses that throw their budget off and then they think, hey, budgets don't work. It's usually just because they're, they're not including those bigger ones that surprise them. So, yeah. Um, rule three, we tell people roll with the punches. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to overspend. It's okay to adjust. The budget isn't set in stone. Um, if we, we celebrate, when someone overspends, I tell, tell them, hey, good job. Good job for realizing you had to spend the money, you made an adjustment, you changed your game plan, and you just move on. There's nothing wrong with overspending in a budget. It's just a plan that is malleable as new information comes up. So, nice. um, Fourth one is an aspirational goal. Teach people to try and live on last month's income. So what you earn in you know, July, you spend in August. What you earned in August, you spend in September. And get people away from that paycheck to paycheck cycle. So. That, that, that's it in a, you know, it's pretty much as quick as I can say, man, but there's a lot more to it. So. Yeah. No, that's good. Uh, you know, I think the, one of the biggest objections or obstacles that people can, when it comes to budgeting is, one, getting started, mm -hmm. uh, and then after they get started is maintaining that. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about how YNAB helps people, one, you know, make it, makes it easier to get people to get started, and once they get started, that they can continue the process? Absolutely. The, the key is in getting started is to not try and do everything all at one time. Most people have, they think their finances are simple and they're actually fairly complex. They'll have uh, sometimes joint accounts with a spouse. They'll sometimes have uh, eight different accounts or three checking accounts, multiple credit cards, some they use, some they don't use. It, it gets fairly complex quickly. And we try and tell people the first rule when getting started is do not forecast your budget. Do not project what you want. And I don't care if you're on a salary that you've been on for 10 years that's absolutely consistent like clockwork. Mm -hmm. You do not project. You sit there and you say, okay, if I were to start, like if you and I were to say, hey, Jeff, I want to get you started in two minutes, I'd say, okay, Jeff, pull in your, uh, your spending account, take your balance, let's put that into YNAB. Now let's take that money and divvy it up into categories where you want to spend that money until you're paid again. It's just basically answering that question, what do I want this money to do before new money comes in? And that's all there is to getting started. You can add layers of complexity, like, uh, hey, I have this credit card that I use all my spending on and I pay it off in full. That's, that's fine too and you, know, you can walk through that. But the gist of it is, is just, okay, what do I have right now on hand? What do I want to do with it before I have new money on hand? Once you get the new money, you ask yourself the same question, okay, what do I want to do with this money? It's like you got new uh, go with my analogy again, new soldiers lining up saying, hey, what do you want me to do? I just got here. And you say, okay, you go here, you go here. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's the gist of it. And sticking with it, the biggest thing we do that separates us from most every other uh, software application, one I think people should know right away is we do not directly connect with your banks to automatically pull in your information. And this is by design. And I think we're just one of the last of a dying breed that doesn't do this. But we, uh, I want people to enter their transactions manually. I want them to do it on their phone and just have it update automatically over the cloud. I want them to be able to stand in Home Depot after they purchase that rake and pop it in into their uh, lawn and garden category or whatever it is and know right there, okay, I just spent money. This is how it affects my budget. I'm feeling good about it. I plan for it. And uh, staying up to date by being involved in the process instead of assuming, hey, I'll just grab everything once a month and do a post-mortem after all the dust is settled. And so that's, that's the biggest thing to stick to it is you build a habit yeah. of staying engaged. 
It's, I, I like that because, uh, you know, I think everybody always says, you know, use Mint, you know, use Yodely, use all these places, which, like you said, it keeps track of what you're spending, but only if you log in and look at it. You know yeah, what I mean? Because you go to Home Depot and spend 150 bucks. I mean, like you said, you don't, you know, you did it, but until you actually log in into your account a month later, you know, what does that, how does that really affect you when you're really trying to ma uh, manage what you're spending? So. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's like it's like looking at uh, you know you you're looking at a a football game, right? And you, all you do is look at video, and you never actually make a game plan for the next game. You're just looking at video, and yeah. so it's like yeah, that that data is really good, except you're not turning around and applying what you learned going forward, and that's where we just try and get people to face forward instead of always looking in their rearview mirror. Yeah. You know, so to speak. Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about how if somebody was in line, they just bought that rake, how they can go in and input that on their phone. Uh, there is an app that you guys have. Can you talk a little bit about the app and maybe any other tools or resources that people can use to kind of help with their budgeting game plan? Yeah. The first thing I would have people do, just if they're getting started, we run live webinars almost daily where we take about usually about 40 to 50 people. We try and keep the classes small so we can answer questions. But these aren't like recorded webinars. We run them live. We answer these new questions from people coming in. And we basically walk people just from point A to Z like, okay, here is exactly what you need to do to get started. And when they start off right, their chance of sticking is way high. So that would be the first resource I'd point people to. Okay. Second one is um, to stick to it. The mobile apps are huge. And I actually underestimated how important they would be a few years ago. I thought, well, you know, okay, yeah, they're great. But as I saw how it affected my own finances, having your, your money with you on your phone where you can just check on the go, having it update to the cloud, having my wife be able to look at her phone. She's got an Android. I have an iPhone. But they both, they stay in sync all the time. The desktop stays in sync. It's just an effortless situation. And we do some pretty slip things on the phone. Like uh, this is coming to the Android, but on the iPhone, if I've already recorded that Home Depot transaction a few weeks ago and I'm in there again buying something else, because I know I will be, yeah. then we it recognizes, oh, hey, Jesse's standing in Home Depot or near Home Depot. The payee is Home Depot. It's probably in this same category. So what I end up entering in is the amount as I'm sitting there at the self-checkout. And you're talking about a 10-second thing to pull out your phone and do that, but the psychological win is is huge. So. The mobile apps, I think, are, are game changers, and I'm, I'm excited to see all the tech that's going that way because I think it's going to help people stay engaged. Yeah, I, everything that you just outlined is, is starting to make me up. I'm trying to get I'm getting converted to becoming a budgeter now. <laughs> no, stay strong. Stay strong. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so for those that want to get started, that uh, they're interested in trying out YNAB, tell us how, how, that, how that works. Tell us how just, it works, how to get started, and like cost involved. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So jump on uh, YNAB.com or YouNeedABudget.com. Uh, go to the download link. You can run it for 34 days, which gives you we, – we did it 34 on purpose. Gives you time to see how the month rollover happens, how you can just see how this, the four-rule method applies to an entire month in the next planning session. So I jump on there, uh, poke around a little bit, check the class schedule, see if there's a class that works. And then just uh, hop onto the webinar. They're usually about an hour. They're very pro, like very dialed in. Um, you won't have someone popping in and just kind of shooting from the hip. Like th these presentations are rock solid. So uh, jump in there for an hour and you'll have a lot of light bulb moments as to, okay, yeah, oh, I thought about money this way. Yeah, but if I think about it this way, it's a whole new thing. And, and we're really trying to just shift people's thinking along those lines. So I have to say, Jump in there, grab the free trial, and uh, check the class schedule. You can go to click on the support link and see them there. And uh, then if, if it works for you, we uh, sell it for $60, and we do free minor updates. Um, and then every once in about two years, we'll do a major upgrade where we'll give people a discounted price if they've purchased before. But it's not a subscription. Um, it's just a one-time deal, and yeah, we're trying to keep it simple that way. So. Awesome. Great. Uh, and I'll have links uh, below in the post so people can uh, click on over and try it out. And uh, I love the website I'm looking at right now. I mean, it just, you make budgeting look cool. <laughs> it, it is cool. It's not, it's not fake, man. That's the real stuff. It is cool. <laughs> <laughs> love it. All right. Well, Jesse, I appreciate your time, man. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm excited to get people on budgeting, get them, get them on board. So this looks like a great program to try out. Any closing hey. thoughts? 
Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate it, man. And uh, I know we'll be touching base at FinCon here soon, so can't mm -hmm. wait. All and, right. Uh, we'll talk to you then. All right. Appreciate your time. Bye-bye.